Hey guys, so today we are answering a subscriber question and the question in question was Frederick, do you remember the last time you were truly challenged as a programmer? So let's get into it. Well, the last time, like, I mean, you have your daily tasks and you have bugs and you have things that you kind of need to figure out uh, pretty much every day. But if we're talking about something significant that really made me go, oh, this is kind of this is going to be rough. I'm going to have to. Oh, okay, I'm I'm going to have to really try to like to get this correct. The last time I did something like that, because it doesn't happen all that often, which is like the big lie that a lot of. Uh, well, you may get that into your heads that in software development, hey, everything is just one big math problem that you or math test that you're taking, like where. You're basically just every single moment of every single day trying to solve some extremely complicated problem. And what's interesting about this is that a lot of recruiters and people who are hiring people, they have absolutely, like, they have no idea what you do. They have no idea what it's about because most of the time it is as simple as having a data shape or some type of data there's an incoming request or something depending on where you work you work if it's front end or back end you do some form of data transformation send out a network request or a database request or something like that and that's pretty much it but when it comes to things that are truly truly complicated it's very rarely the standard crud stuff it has to do with much more sophisticated things like and than that and for me, the most complicated thing I've done in recent time was to work on um, one of the most, well, pretty much the most critical algorithm within, uh, within the application that I was working on. And the basic problem, the problem that I'm, I was basically faced was to figure out how to identify a sequence of transactions and basically I have a very, very long list of transactions. Well, not always a long list, we'll touch on that as well. And the basic problem was to figure out from this set, data set of transactions, what is a subscription? Basically to figure that out. And you may think, well, that doesn't sound so complicated. Well. Let's just walk through it. So the easiest way to figure that out is to have a look at, okay, if because you're going to have about three data points to work with. You're going to have a some type of date, like when the transaction like actually happened. You're going to have a recipient of some sort who actually, who did you pay things to? And thirdly, you're going to have a price of some sort, some the amount of money that you pay. But this is the basics. Of, uh, that's the thing that you can trust. You will may have other data points depending on situation but for the most part this is this is what you have so the obvious solution here is to go through all of these um, events and have a look at the dates and check if there is a sequence of these dates like in basically you check weekly monthly like the common subscription patterns that you can imagine and then you combine and you match that against all right is the price the same Easy peasy. So in a perfect world, if you have, say, a monthly subscription, then you would have a payment that is every month and have the, with the same amount. Awesome. That is a very basic way of solving that problem. But reality is a little bit different because that may give you a very simple case where, for the most part, you're going to be able to match some of the most ideal cases for this. But you now imagine that the, there's a sequence where the payments are a little bit more flaky than that. You may be paying that, it may be, it's not the exact same day. Maybe there's an offset of maybe a day here or, here or there for each of these steps. No bother, you can add a magic number and say that, okay, maybe not exactly every month, but almost, like pretty much every single month. Cool. Now you have a different like, case to handle. And this kind of goes on until you start to get into the really tricky parts of figuring this sort of thing out. And that is, okay, let's say that you have a, a recipient of some sort, a person, like an, an organization that uh, provides subscription services, but also pr provides payment services. Let's say that you have a gym membership 
and you pay a monthly subscription or a monthly payment to, to that gym for some reason and then one day at a really inconvenient time for the algorithm because it might match in the sequence you go in and you pay for a towel and a snack of some sort of banana or whatever and that price just happens to be roughly the same amount as the as the amount you pay every month how will the algorithm figure that out then you have other things to figure out okay so if you have electricity well the price of electricity is going to go up and down quite a lot even if you pay it every month so how do you know if that's a subscription it's not it's not the same amount well you could look at the vendor of course and hopefully or the, the recipient and hopefully that's going to solve it then you have other considerations what if you, the data set that you're getting is actually inconsistent if it's not consistent it's kind of hard to to do much with it because the ideal case is that you get all the transactions but sometimes that's not true so the, this problem is actually extremely hard my favorite is this what happens if you have a monthly subscription and all of a sudden you decide that no uh, I just I want to upgrade this subscription to another package I want to be a gold member instead and all of a sudden the price change it's the same payment like every date but the price goes up by like double the total the the previous amount is that still a subscription so you hopefully you can start to see like why this is a fairly complicated problem but it's also the these are the sorts of problems like uh, google has a very similar problem with say the search engine that's the sort these are the sorts of problems that i personally think are extremely interesting because they are it's not possible to you, like you cannot definitively solve this problem it's impossible to solve it in a completely deterministic way it the only way that you can solve it is to create a algorithm a sort of guessing algorithm if you will that you basically improve to the point where it gets a really really high accuracy it's in this like you can think about it in the terms of say classifying within machine learning where you simply train your algorithm to know like the different categories and it will always have the possibility of having some there's a small possibility that it will get an answer wrong depending on the situation but the more you train it and the better it gets the less likely that is to happen so that would be an example uh, the most recent thing that i can remember that was that is truly tricky to work on but uh, yeah that's going to be my answer so what I, what i want you to take away from this is that when it comes to like problems within programming uh, the biggest lie is that most of what we do is truly complicated it's actually not like it's of course as a beginner it's going to be tricky for you when you start out to learn all the tools and all the practices but once you know how to you know inter do service side work like the basic day everyday stuff that's almost to the point where it kind of I mean shit guys I sometimes I just zone out while I write my code because I have written it a hundred times before it's not an issue for me to retrieve a record from a database apply some change or mutation to that record and save it again that's and that's a lot of what you do it's uh, it's not that complicated the truly complicated problems though those these are the problems where you can't deterministically create the end result that's the really that those are the sorts of problems that i think are extremely interesting and they are by far the hardest that you can possibly attempt so yeah that's going to be my answer have a great day